Today's video is about why Dark Souls 3 is my favorite game of all time. So while most people are here at the start of the video, I'm going to be making a mini-series called Basically Dark Souls 3, basically doing an in-depth pros guide to Dark Souls 3, from things to best weapons for player versus player and player versus entity, to best builds for PvP, to the fastest way to beat the game. I plan on making it to 2-3 to three part series, so subscribe to see all that in the future. I know having Dark Souls 3 put over Bloodborne as a better game is an unpopular opinion. Maybe I will make a video ex explaining what I like more about one than the other. But if you are interested about my thoughts on Bloodborne, you can check out this video on screen about my first initial thoughts on the game after my first playthrough. It's a pretty old video, so my opinions may change a bit. Anyways, let's get into the video. I'm going to talk about my first playthrough a bit, just like I did in the Bloodborne video, explaining my thoughts on the game. I bought the game on August 24th, 2016, three months after it was released, but didn't play it for a month because my PC was trashed with the GTX 750. Before that, also finishing Dark Souls 2 with my friend Shad. So a month after I bought the game, I decided to just deal with the low frames. The game isn't much different at all from the second in terms of items and initial layout. You got your Estus flask to heal, weapons and catalysts to defend yourself. The game mechanics such as rolling and movement was such a difference. I had to get used to it. I very quickly found out the gameplay was much smoother. So when you're first thrown into the game, you have the option to fight a tougher enemy and require a level up item for boss weapons. You meet Yudix Gundir. He doesn't put up much of a fight till about half his health, and then he shows his true colors of being an infected warrior, and proceeds to slap you back and forth. What FromSoft does here is lets the player know that they ain't messing around. They are preparing you for the harsh road ahead, which I love about the Dark Souls games. In every game, they just expect you to figure it all out yourself, and just explore to find your way around. This changes a bit with Dark Souls 3 and makes it a bit easier to know where you're going just by sheer role design. We will talk more about world design later, but for now we will just say some of the best in all of gaming. The game appeals to all playstyles. You want to play a large tank that wields a massive weapon? Go for it. Level strength and vitality. You want to hit a bit faster and maybe have a bit more speed? Level up endurance and dex. You like casting spells and doing massive damage from a distance? You can choose from being a sorcerer, pyromancer, or a cleric. Just to name a few advanced builds and basic builds, you have strength build, dex build, sorcerer, pyromancer, cleric, chaos build, dark build, deep build, quality build, tank build, glass cannon build, dragon build, bow build. There are just so many endless possibilities that can appeal to any player however that you want to play. Coming with all those builds also comes with a massive variety of 200 plus weapons weapons, spells, shields, and around 80 sets of armor with 4 pieces per set. But remember, fashion over stats at any time of the day. In an episode of Basically Dark Souls 3, I plan on going into every pro and con of every weapon class in the game, so look out for that. As you progress through the game, you get used to how the area system works. Go through area, beat boss, next area, run through area, beat boss, and so on. I haven't even touched the subject of what these games are known for, the difficulty. I went through the game so many times that no part of the game poses a difficulty anymore. If you're a short tempo person that easily gets upset over things such as dying to a boss in a game. Unless you have undying will to beat the game, this game is not for you and you should not play it for your own good. Go back to Overwatch competitive where all the rest of the salt is. Most of the community loves the game for its co-op. And yes, while the game with friends is fun and makes the game easier, I don't encourage it. The massive feeling of accomplishment is amazing when conquering a boss that has been kicking your trash for hours and hours. I recommend playing the game first. That way, if you're playing with a friend, you aren't just carried as a new player. It ruins the full experience. But play however you want, this is just my opinion on how you should play. I'll tell you what, what keeps me coming back to this game is the literal no competition of the best boss fights in gaming. I still need to finish the series of my top favorite bosses in the game that I started some odd months ago. Link to the video in the description. I know I promised the next video would be out the next next week, but, but then tons of life things happened and I got into some new games and lost motivation for the video. But maybe as the finale of basically Dark Souls 3 videos, I could release the second part. But these videos take a long time as you know, so I might not have it for another while. So back to the bosses. They're the most well designed in all of gaming, and I truly believe that. I can't think of a single series that is on par with the level of the Dark Souls series bosses. Leave a comment if you can. Bosses have a set pattern to how they fight and it is up to the player to learn how the bosses fight and avoid and attack accordingly. Some bosses take so long to overcome, but that's okay. Just keep going at it. Every boss has an incredible backstory if you look hard enough as to why you are fighting them. The deep lore of this game is incredibly interesting. Check out Vati Vidya if you are too lazy like me to look for the clues in the game. Hidetaka Miyazaki, who directed Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, co-directed Dark Souls 2, again, head directed Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne, is also the president of From Software, stated in an interview with PlayStation on storytelling, quote, I'm a fan of stories that require to use a little bit more of your imagination in order to really understand the whole thing. When I was young, I used to enjoy reading books that were too hard for me, where I could only read maybe half the kanji, I don't know what kanji means, and using my imagination to fill in the gaps. I wanted to see if I could bring that kind of experience to a video game, where you use your imagination 
imagination to bridge those gaps, unquote. He has mastered this way of storytelling. In everyone's first playthrough of any Dark Souls game, it seems you are just running through areas and killing bosses, but look a lot closer and you realize every boss in every area has a vast backstory to it. Next thing we all talk about is player versus player. I probably enjoyed the PvE element more than the PvP element in Dark Souls 3, but I've probably sunk more into PvP than the PvE. The PvP in Dark Souls 3 isn't the best when it comes to an RPG PvP type game. A lot of the time you can just wait for your opponent to be stupid and attack first and you just counterattack. This is a very boring way to play, but it's how the PvP works. Every time you land a hit, you are guaranteed a true combo into your second hit. Some weapons even have a three or more true combo, such as Gale's Greatsword or the Split Leaf Greatsword. Invading is such a different experience than the arena PvP. You can invade any area in the game as long as the host is embered in that area. Most of the time, there will be a host with a couple of phantoms running through the game, so three on one isn't fair in odds. You have to play very smart and either kill the phantoms first or just end the host. This is insanely fun, but also very frustrating and probably became the main reason I don't PvP as much as I used to. Pontus Backyard, also known as Gang City, is the most popular area to invade in the game. Friends summon each other and wait for invaders to invade. Then it's an all-out brawl to see you can come out on top. A lot of the time, the host and the phantoms win because they have coordination and the invaders don't. But still, PvP has endless possibilities when it comes to opponents and their builds. You need to learn their habits and mix up your own habits and play mind tricks to play them right into your hands. So to end off the video, I will summarize why Dark Souls 3 is my favorite game of all time. Intense, difficult gameplay, incredibly diverse ways to play such as builds and playstyles, best boss fights in all of gaming accompanied by an astounding soundtrack, a fun PvP system that I'd love to see improved in some way, and some of the best world design that will keep you asking questions about the mysterious lore of the game. So that's about it, I don't know why I decided to make a video gushing about this game, I guess I'm just so passionate about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe to look out for the basically Dark Souls 3 videos coming soon, and I will see all of you in the next one.